We've all heard the saying, you never get a second chance to make a great first impression. And while that's true in the dating world, it's also true in real estate. So if you're thinking about selling your Summit County property this year, stick around because in this video, I'd like to share with you my top five things for a successful sale of your property this year. Hey everybody, it's Pete Dininger with the Breck Life Group at eXp Realty. And in this video, I'd like to go over with you the five things that I think it's essential that you undertake in advance of listing your property for sale. Let's get right to it. Over the years, we've learned that the longer a property is on the market, the harder it can be for that property to sell and the less likely it is that that property will sell at or near its full list price, even in a competitive market such as this. So the very first thing I want you to consider and the first thing we recommend is a pre-listing home inspection. And you may say to yourself, why in the world do I need to do a home inspection when our buyer is going to do a home inspection? Well, a pre-listing home inspection is a very small expense that can pay huge dividends for you. There's two real things that a pre-listing home inspection can uncover. First, um, it may uncover those things that you're not even aware of. I mean, you live in the home or you use it frequently, but you may not know everything about your property. And certainly a buyer, when they have a home inspection, their home inspector is going to cover uncover any of those hidden items. Secondly, if you are living in your property full time, there may be things that you always intended to fix and you've just found ways to live around those items. And so a pre-listing home inspection can be a great way to remind you of that to-do list that you always set out for yourself. Regardless, if you do a pre-listing home inspection and you address those items of a safety and habitability nature, when the buyer comes in to see your property, it's going to show pride of ownership and they're going to know that the home was well maintained and lovingly cared for. And that is going to go a long way in helping them to move forward with your home as their next property. The second item on the list is to declutter. And this just means let's go around your property and take a look at all of those horizontal surfaces where you come in and you just drop things on a counter, um, on a credenza, on a bookcase when you come home. Those things are where we tend to collect items over the long haul. And we're looking for clean surfaces so that when a buyer walks in, they don't see your items and possessions everywhere. Let's go ahead and put things in Rubbermaid containers, stack them neatly away. And what I'm suggesting is not to just take everything, pick it all up and stuff it into a closet because when your buyer is walking through your property, they're going to open closet doors. They want to understand how much storage for their personal possessions. So I'd love it if each of your closets was only about half full, the, a buyer will be able to look in there and say, yeah, there's plenty of storage for us to put our things in here. We just want them to be able to walk through and imagine them living in this space. All right. Number three on our list is to D personalize. And this sort of goes hand in hand with the declutter, but this really addresses all of your family photos, maybe your wildest, zaniest art piece, anything that says you and your personalization. And the reason for this is when a buyer walks through a home, we want them not to think, oh, I'm in somebody else's property. We want them to see it as a blank canvas. We want them to imagine themselves moving in and beginning to live their mountain dreams in this property. So let's reduce the total number of personalized items like family photos and things like that leaving a few out that show the lifestyle or life of the property is really helpful because it will help them imagine, oh yeah, when we're here, we'll have easy access to the slopes or we'll have easy access to the lake, anything like that. We just don't want to overwhelm them with family photos so that it's hard for them to imagine themselves in your property. Up next on number four on the list is a fresh coat of paint. And what I'm thinking about here mostly is let's think about 
everybody likes to come in and make some splash in their home. They love an accent wall, something bright red and bold. And what we're, as I mentioned previously, we're really looking for a buyer to walk in and see a blank canvas so that they can personalize the home for themselves. And so let's try and look for neutral colors throughout your property so the buyer will have that blank canvas and make it their own. Um, and if you can't go to the process of repainting every wall in nice neutral colors, then let's at least walk through the property and look for those nicks and dents and scuffs that are going to show that the property has been, let's say, lived in pretty hard. Uh, we want to make it as clean and fresh and appealing for the buyer so that the pride of ownership really shines through. And number five on the list, I really think, and we always counsel for our sellers to look to professional staging, even if it's just a two hour professional consultation. And here's why. How you live in your home is not always the, the most appealing to how a buyer would like to walk in and see your property. And the things that we often think of are, um, you know, you have a chair where the back of it faces the entrance to the room. And so when you walk in, you're seeing the back of the chair, it stifles the flow of the floor plan. And so some fresh set of eyes like a professional stager in a two hour staging can come through and really make recommendations about how to achieve that open and spacious feel. This is especially true in smaller properties, condos where uh, we may see some overstuffed furniture. Um, you're trying to accommodate the most number of people to, to be able to sit down, but you really want to open it up and make it inviting for someone to walk in and feel at home when they enter your property. This is again, a very minimal expense and yields really big dividends in how a buyer's first impression of your property is going to be. So that wraps up my top five tips for successfully preparing your property for a sale this year. And I've got a special bonus tip for you. And that is if you live in your home or you've got tenants in your property, let's make a showing checklist so that from the time we call you and say, Hey, there's a buyer that's going to be there in one hour or two hours or tomorrow afternoon. You've got a checklist of every single thing that you can do to prepare your property before you step out of the way and allow your buyers into the home. And that includes things like, we love it if you would just check all the surfaces, wipe all the surfaces down, collect garbage and take it outside, open up all the blinds, turn on all the lights, and maybe even put on some soft music so it's really warm and inviting when the buyers enter your property. So if you found these tips helpful and you'd like to better understand the current value of your Summit County property, go ahead Ahead, click the link below. You can call, text, or email us. We can walk you through a custom valuation of your property in this fast paced market. And at the same time, we can sit down with you and talk about our targeted marketing strategy to get your property sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Thank you.